What is high quality dance? What does it look like and what sort of skills does it develop in pupils? In order to demonstrate what high quality dance is, Bobby Gargrave, advisory PE teacher for Barking and Dagenham, recreates a series of six dance lessons in which a year four class make a dance piece about ancient Egypt. High quality dance is when children are committed to dance education, they want to do it. I like doing the dance <coughs> we're doing. It's about raising levels of physical activity and fitness through dance. The dance is a very cool lesson because it's just a good exercise for you. Seeing children as choreographers and as an audience. Focus and concentrating. Right, so we're going to do our best. It's about them being able to communicate well with each other and with an audience too. And it's also about having um, dance opportunities within the school on a regular basis. One of the outcomes for the whole unit of work would be to have a complete dance with clear sections. Section A is our time machine and travel through the time channels. Section B is finding out we're in ancient Egypt, so the shapes coming through the sand idea. Section C is where we have the workers in Egypt working on the pyramids. Section D is where we have the explorers and the archaeologists. And we turn back to section A as our final section. Each section of the dance is developed in the first five lessons. And lesson six is a performance of the whole piece. What we're going to do in our first lesson is really try to create a simple travelling <coughs> motif. In lesson one we're going to work on creating a simple motif based on basic body actions. We're going to develop that motif by using the changes of speed and time. And the idea it's going to relate to is travelling through space as if in a time machine. So we're going to have an idea interpreted into movement. You need to be absolutely clear about your motif and the order of your actions. Can you remember it? Can you repeat it? Right, you've got your motif, you know what it is. You are now going to develop it by changing the speed to make it really interesting. So that's your decision. Is that clear? Off you go. So I should see lots of speed changes happening in the room. Remember we talked about this, you're still going to take your motifs in and out of space. Nathan, that is a really nice controlled rolling action, well done. I think the value of dance is that they actually well engage in the learning themselves. It gives them an opportunity to be creative, it gives them an opportunity to be themselves, and it gives them an opportunity to bring something they know to the, to the uh, learning situation as well, because it's often about their response and not anybody else's response. Number one is going to see if they can spot which actions did they do slowly and which actions did they do very quickly. OK, off you go. There were moments in the lesson when we were talking about motif development using speed where the children clearly understood that because when you went back to look at it, you could see the improvement in their sequence by seeing the changes of speed. They could also tell you about the changes of speed and that to me was high quality because they'd taken on board the learning and they'd actually put it into their own movement. And also there were moments when the children were talking about each other's sequences that they used the right language and they made a real judgement about what they were seeing because they had information to feed back to you. I like the way that um, you done the leap and then the jump. Some of them were fast and some of them were slow, so I liked that. Every lesson will include some element of evaluation and it may be evaluation in terms of the children learning evaluative skills as an audience or as an appreciator. And it may be the evaluations used to evaluate where we've got to and where we're going to go next. And as a teacher, we would always evaluate in order to look for the next lesson and where the objectives are going to focus. You did the most beautiful spin and it would be really nice if you put the arms either tight or open it so it really makes it because you want it to be fast so make it fast and the arms will stop you from falling yeah you could make those improvements because you know what to look for now. I've um, improved my spins from the from my arms tucked in or spinned out and why was it good when he was watching you because if I went wrong he won't like help me now you've got to focus a lot in, when you do your dances. 
In lesson two is going to be body shapes. We're going to look at creating our own shapes and we're going to look at creating group shapes. We're going to really focus this lesson on improving and clarifying our shapes, making them very, very clear. So when I look at them, it's like a picture. We're not fussing. Again, that very important that they have clarity exactly. and they have coordination yeah, and control in body shape. Exactly. And we're going to look at that through using the artifacts as an Egyptian stimulus. So they looked at the shape and the size and the angles. And we also used images from a number of different Egyptian textbooks about the Egyptian art. And artifacts had actually been drawing in artwork. We're not teaching them about ancient Egypt in dance, but we're using the information and knowledge that they've learnt in their other lessons, so they will bring that to the lesson and they will consolidate it within that lesson. So they're going to do an awful lot of cross-curricular learning too. Remember, you've got to have nice angles in your elbows and your wrists. It's a statue, it's made of something, so it's absolutely still and solid. Well, Shalom, you've got really starry eyes there. I love that, I really believe that one. Think about your hands, they should be sharper and stronger. Think about your elbows, think about your toes, think about your focus. Magic. Now it sinks from there, I'm going to give you four counts of stink dance. You can identify a high quality by the attitude of the children actually moving and dancing. Are they actually focused, are they concentrating, so they know what they're doing. So that's high quality because they understand what the dance is about, they understand the questions you've set them, and they understand why they are responding in the way they are responding. So they have clear focus and clear intention. And you can yes. see that by the That's way they work within the lesson. So you've tightened the shape up and you've made the angles clearer. Travel to our group so then we get to our posing shapes. Yeah. Now, can you hold that? You sure? And really think about that focus so you really get that lift. And let's bring those arms out so we get the angles. But me and you in the middle and the two. It looks better. I did enjoy that because there was a lot of fun things to do in there. Well, we um, improved our, most of our shapes, like um, taking our time instead of rushing them really quickly. The best bit of that lesson was putting the moves into a sequence. If you didn't like it, you can change it and make stuff up as you go along. We're doing it in history, learning about Tutankhamun and his discovery of his tomb and the archaeologists who found him. In lesson three, we're going to look at a new action called gesture, which is where they use their body to communicate working actions. And then the lesson is going to teach them how to develop those gestures from miming so into motifs. When we talked about miming, we mimed an action. How do I make it more dance-like? Make it more like bold. Bolder? So how do I make it bolder? You show that, that it's heavy and you show that you're really trying to push it. So the whole thing has got to be... Expressive? Ex absolutely expressive. Sam, you've come up with some great words. Look, let me give you a clue. I'm drinking a cup of tea, OK? Now, I'm going to exaggerate it to make it more dance-like. What have I done? Bigger. Bigger. Size. I've exaggerated it. Size is very important. So we've got the size, sharpness, boldness, we've got the weight. And we're going to repeat it so it looks like it's got a rhythm. Dana, you're a puller. To get the gestures and the working actions. I used a clip of video from a documentary about the building of the Great Pyramids. So we actually identified the work actions by looking at what was going on in the documentary. Freeze! You've really changed the size. Excellent. Now take it to your group and make sure the whole group has got the exaggeration in it. And one. More size, more weight, more sharpness. Come on! Stronger, bigger, good quality. Can I ask you all just to freeze for a second and look at this group? Really clear patterns and established a really good rhythm with it. Da da, stop. Fantastic, so you can see it's a real dance-like action. Me and um, Darcy there, we were scribes and um, Lucy was like um, the boss of all of us to like, tell us to keep on working and um, Jack was um, a chiseler. In lesson four, we're moving to another characterisation where we take the idea of the archaeologist discovering a map, moving into exploring the chambers so underneath the pyramids. Show your position when you found that map. Girls, this is beautiful because you've got a real difference of level. I like that. They're going to learn some motifs and link them together as a group, using a pickaxe, a shovel, and a dust brush. 
and they're then going to do a very improvised session about travelling, leading and following, travelling through the chambers. Who did the digging? The pickaxe, the dusting. Off you go. And freeze. Fantastic. From there, you are going to go on your exploration, so get to your partner to do the exploring. And travel to... every time. I think the other thing about high quality dance is if you say to them show me your position they can go straight to that position because they know where they're going to be in space and time. Now this is the next bit we're going to improvise so that means you are going to do it as it comes to you aren't you? So you've got to go in quite narrow spaces. You might keep changing them, but I want to see you travelling in narrow spaces. Also, high quality means they can get on with a task and work with it without you having to be completely guiding them through that task. You set the task, they know the question, and they have enough knowledge to actually give you an answer. They're not afraid of being right or wrong because they know that dance has a variety of different outcomes. So they have the confidence to make their own statement in their movement. And that's very important for high quality that they feel confident to make their own response. I like to see you sneak through a very narrow passage here. I need to believe you, I need to believe what's happening. Um, we done travelling, doing sequences and and working in partners. If you've forgotten, you could just ask your partner or someone in your group. When you go under and over the t uh, in the tunnels, and it's really good when it's like you're really excited about getting to Tutankhamun's. And sh sometimes if you're thieves, you're really excited about getting all the gold. Lesson five will then be pulling all of those sections together, looking at the connecting bits, the transitions between each piece, and giving them time to rehearse so they improve their movement. Well, we would discuss that lesson an ending for the piece, and that would be very much down to the children's ideas. We'd explore a couple of the endings and see which one was the best. How would you finish this dance? We can like, all get into one line and then take a big bow. <laughs> we could sort of freeze in a... In a, po in a pose. Go back into the time travelling machine and travel back. Interesting. Reverse it, go back to section A. I like that. Can we take Aston's as a possible ending? So when we finish in the time tunnel, we're then going to reverse ourselves back and then spin back out to where we started. Lesson six would be our culmination of the unit of work. We pull the whole thing together, do a, a proper performance and maybe evaluate it ourselves or we'll get another class in to evaluate it. High quality dance is about being the best the children can achieve, so you have aspirations and you have standards which push the children's skill level. So you are looking for control coordination, you are looking for choreographic skills, you are looking for language that uses movement vocabulary to describe movement. The thing that I've learned in this unit of work is to keep in touch with my partners. To dance more accurately. Keeping in time with the music. We can make our shapes more and bolder and bigger. Different um, speed. Keeping time with my group. How to put things together and speed. To keep um, space. 